Hi guys, Dean Casmento speaking and welcome to another episode of My Virtual Coach. Now, we talk about time and we talk about being accountable to time. We talk about getting most of our time or getting the most out of our time. Um, we often hear how there is never enough time in the day uh, and how we always seem to feel or think that time is literally running away. Now, you know, a lot of the time, it's probably because we don't really value time, to be honest, because if we did value time, uh, what we'd find is we, we'll be, we would be really, really accountable to it. Now, uh, obviously, as a role of a coach um, in, obviously, my practice, you know, we're all about results-based coaching. We're all about generating result and getting result with the client every single session, okay? And a lot of the time, the results come from such really, really simple processes. You know, ones that are either I've made up myself along the way or that I've learned from my amazing mentors um, that I've worked with in the past and that I currently work with today, plus the plethora of books that I attempt to read, even if I do follow the sort of the the 80-20 uh, rule on that one where I really only ever sort of nitpick through 20% of the book um, to get the real juice as compared to reading from cover to cover. But anyway, you know, it's about process. You know, it's about processes that will assist us in feeling, feeling empowered, that bring great cl 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 clarity to our life. And uh, obviously, ideally, tapping into our level of inspiration where we don't need any other external motivation to drive us. Now today, what I want to share with you, and it's something that, uh, that comes up quite a lot, and this is to do with accountability, and this is to do with responsibility. You know, you think about whose responsibility is it for change? You know, there's, you know I, I think that, you know, it's almost become a sort of a preconditioned way of thinking that it's very easy to sort of shift responsibility over to somebody else. But you know as well as I do that doesn't and never will get a result. So it's about responsibility. It's about how we can be accountable with ourselves and how can we get the greatest level of investment out of our time also. And I suppose talking about time, that's something that I wanted to talk to you about today and how we can start creating a model and when I say a model, almost like a model of excellence, okay? And that's what sort of coaching is all about. And I know that's what NLP, for example, which is a modality for change, really does base itself on. It's modeling excellence that someone else has done that can easily be um, sort of modeled or, or embedded into somebody else's way of thinking, you know? Because if you can do it, why can't I? Type of thing. So, but today, I'm gonna to show you a little process around really turning our goals, turning our, I suppose, our tasks into powerful action steps, uh, and ones that uh, I suppose will free us up with more time. This is sort of what we're getting at. You know, how can we go about freeing ourselves up with time? And uh, to get to actually spend time on doing the things that we really love and create a greater sense of purpose and inspiration in our life. Now, as you can see, there's three things here, right? We've got a checklist, we've got accountability, and we've got evidence. Okay, so you've probably heard these words before, but what I wanted to share with you is, you know, you're, you're really clear, as I step out of the screen, you're really clear on what a checklist is, right? So a checklist is all those things that you need to do each day. You know, we're talking about, you know, getting really, really, really um, accountable with our time, right? And we have a checklist. You know, how many times have you thought about a checklist? You know, you've got, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 10. and potentially, Potentially, the list could go on and on and on, okay? Which then can potentially cause um, what is known as overwhelm, right? Now, I'm not, I'm not uh, I suppose, hitting a checklist over, over, over the head with a hammer, but there are better ways of going about creating a checklist, but unfortunately, I'm not, talking, I'm not gonna be talking about that today. Um, but one thing to talk about a checklist, right, that I do wanna mention, is that if you have a big checklist of things that you wanna get done each day, Right, if you do have a big checklist, okay, it's very, very important. And if you are someone that has a, pen a tendency to get stressed and overwhelmed, it's very important to think about your checklist and start to break your checklist down into different component parts and pieces, okay? So let's say, for example, here we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, let's say 12, 13, 14, 15. What you want to start to do is you want to start coupling um, your checklist into similar areas. So you might say, you know, you might say, let's say, I'll just keep it easy. So one, two, and three are very similar. And, you know, these are very similar here, and these are very similar here. 
and this big chunk of checklist in here is quite similar, okay? So you look at your checklist, you've broken your, you've chunked up, you've generalized your checklist into, instead of having 15 different components, okay, you've now broken it into five, okay? And now here's the kicker. What I'm gonna tell you is that I can guarantee on that list of yours, okay, even though you've generalized and chunked it up into four component parts, pieces, there is probably one or two important things, one or two important things that if you address that one or two important thing, all these other things will take literally take care of themselves. So it could just be, it could just be that thing there, that checklist that addresses all that areas. It could just be that item on the checklist that could address this and this. It could just be that that addresses this and this, if that makes sense, okay? I mentioned 80 20, and I can guarantee when you look in your checklist, it's really only 20% of the things that you do on a daily basis that generates all the difference. So it's about priorities, obviously, and it's about identifying importance. So you could ask yourself if I was addressed one thing right here in one of these areas, what could it, what would one thing be? What could the one thing be that could make all the difference in each of those four or five other things on my checklist? And approach that one first approach that one first. So that's what I want to have to say about checklists. It's about chunking up. So many times people create bloody checklists. They're just way, way, way too long. Can't see fires through, through the trees, okay? You just need to go slightly more big picture, okay? And then focus on what really is important, okay? And then what we want to start to explore, okay, is what I've termed accountability. Now, accountability is probably something different um, to what, to way you've been explained to it, about, explained um, by, before I've been speaking English, probably that'd be great. Now, my reference to accountability is similar to what I used before around modeling excellence. Okay. Now, what goes on, this is a general checklist over here. Now we're looking at an accountability checklist. Now, as you're going through your day, as you're going through your day, right, Start to ask yourself, start to reflect on what are those things that you do each day or what is that one thing you did in one particular day that by the very nature of planning that made a huge difference in your productivity and your efficiency in your day. I hope that makes sense. It doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the checklist. Let me give you an example. Okay, so uh, let's say with me, for example, that I know that on every Sunday, every Sunday evening after the kids have gone, gone to sleep, that if I open up my, my uh, MacBook and I've got an application on my MacBook, which is called Thoughts, a really good app, cool app, it's a journal, right? And what I do is I go about um, literally getting my component parts and pieces of my checklist, okay, and itemizing everything and color coding everything. That's something that I do. So what is red, um, which means it's really, really urgent, pink, it's sort of you know, it can, I can leave it for another couple of days. Green, I've still got potentially a week or two to, to get on top of that. That's a, simple, a little process that I'll put together that I do Sunday after the kids have gone to sleep. But that, for me, sets me up for an amazing week. It's not part of my checklist, but it's something that definitely goes under that accountability checklist. Okay, that accountability checklist. And by the way, there's not a lot of things that'll go in here. Okay, and it might take you some weeks to go about putting items on your accountability checklist. So with accountability, it's when you have done something really well, when you have, when that very thing that you did or thought, felt, um, went really, really well and created create a really, really amazing result, which then allowed you to do this stuff on, on uh, my left-hand side here really easily, that's gotta go down. That's gotta go down on the accountability checklist. I know, for example, when um, I do my mindfulness meditation or my meditation in the morning for 20 minutes, okay, or 30 minutes, okay. Once again, that's something that creates a really good, calm, relaxed state for me, gets me really present, gets me really focused, and allows me to do all this other stuff, okay, at the end of each day, okay, or at the end of each week, right. So, your accountability checklist is when you come up with, when you find out some things that could create that sort of model of excellence. Right, so what eventually happens, guys, this is what happens. What eventually happens, you might eventually get four or five things only on that accountability checklist. But if 
you would just to simply repeat those four or five things each week with these other checklist things, these taskings, they're mandatory, sometimes mundane things that you need to get done. Once you've got these things here, all you need to do, stop, repeat, stop, repeat, stop, repeat. You just need to repeat it each week. Stop it, repeat it the following week. Stop it at the end of the week, repeat it again, repeat it again, repeat it again. And what does that do? That allows you to free up a lot of the thinking inside your head allows you to really direct your focus in a purposeful positive way that connects you to I suppose the real things that really do inspire you and that's really really important okay because when we talk about presence when we talk about mindfulness you know it's all about bringing in the here and now you can't have tomorrow without now and often is the case that too many people are focusing on one or two things unfortunately they're either stuck in the past right past experiences past events with attached negativity or they're so busy focusing on the future worry anxiety fear okay that they forget about now you can't have you can't have tomorrow really without today okay it's right now that makes all the difference okay if that makes sense okay so I thought I'd just throw that in and then finally now this what a question that I'm about to ask you this is your evidence frame Okay, I'll put evidence here. So basically what I'm talking about here is that let's say it could be, I'll put it here, it could be at the end of the week or at the end of the day or at the end of the hour or it could be a 30 minute block. Okay, it could be any, any one of these things. Okay. You want to ask yourself, you know, at the end of my day today, what is it that I want to achieve? What is my evidence to let me know that by the end of the day, I've achieved what I've set out to achieve? Okay? And so you get yourself your evidence list. Okay, you get, this is what we call it, uh, an evidence frame. Okay, you get yourself a, a, a series of steps or things that you're going to have accomplished. So what we're doing here is we're starting our checklist with the end in mind. Okay, we're starting our day with the end in mind. We're starting our week with the end in mind. We're starting our hour with the end in mind. We're starting every 30 minutes with the end in mind. So what happens? If you've got an evidence frame that lets you know, that lets you know that by the end of 30 minutes, one hour, one day, one week, this is what I want to accomplish, this is what I want to achieve, what happens? It's really simple. What you start to do, you start to generalize, you start to distort, you start to delete your focus towards your evidence and you get more of what you want exactly you get more of what you want which is absolutely fantastic because you become more and more and more efficient with your time you get more done in your day and you can spend your day doing what you love and loving what you do okay I hope that really does make sense guys so simple so simple what I recommend you do stop this video wash it back from the start and then get yourself your own little checklist if you want you might want to have a spreadsheet perhaps okay you might want to use Excel or you might, might, might want to get an app or something like that and go ahead and start creating your, your your checklist and maybe you might want to rewind the memory and chunk up your checklist a little bit and find that 20% that makes a little difference okay put an area there around your accountability and you might say accountability slash model of excellence okay so your model of excellence Right, then and you're around your evidence frame. So at the end of each day, end of each week or whatever, play, to create the template whichever way you want to, what is your evidence? We'll let you know that by the end of 30 minutes, one hour, one day, one week, one month, that you've achieved what you want to set out to achieve. The thing guys, just some finishing, why we have the evidence frame, why we have the evidence frame is because we've got in our brain what's called the RAS filter, the reticular activating system, okay? And basically it becomes a beacon Right in our brain that we end up just focusing on we get what we focus on okay we get more and more of what we focus on so please 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 start with the end in mind that's why the evidence frame is so good get some really good objective evidence for yourself okay guys so if you have any questions about this please just email me give me a call okay jump on our website at uh, 
uh, www.deancasimeno.com.au shoot me an email at info at my contact details my phone number my landline my mobile are on my website guys such a simple process okay something you can do right away straight away if it's a bit if if you aren't totally clear which i'm sure you are okay please get in contact with me and once again if you find value in this please by all means go ahead and share Okay, thanks so much for checking in and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of My Virtual Coach. Take care, goodbye, see you, bye.